Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this C++ tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about if statements and state machines in in C++ and how we're going to like use state machines and use this, uh, the switch statement that we can do in C++ for different kind of purposes. So first of all, here, like, what is the basics of an if statement? And when we have an if, if statement, we give them some some condition, and we can see over here to the left that if the condition is true, like, first of all, we we um, we have a number here, like an integer number, which we just declare as as the, the, the value of five, declare the value of five to. And then in down here in the if statement, we can then have a, a condition that is set inside of the, the if statement with these uh, parentheses here. And then we have the number and we check if that number is, is bigger than zero. And if, if the condition inside of the inside of the if statement here is true, then it will execute the, the code under here inside of these curly brackets here. And if it was false, like over here to the right, it will not execute the code inside of the inside of the um, the two, two curly brackets here, and it will just like skip over these lines of code and go to like the next lines after the if statement. So if if some condition is true, we can use if statement to 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 do something in our program or application if some condition occurs or if some condition like uh, happens and we want to do um, something when that condition happens. Um, compared to like some something else that we that we want to do. So we can use if statements for a lot of different kind of things in, in just in, like in C++ and in programming in general. And one of the mo more like used things when we're making more like complex applications or or programs, then we can use if statements as state machines. So let's say we have uh, a lot of different conditions or states that our program can be in. Then we could either like have an if statement um, and like several if statements. So we will say like, if state is this, that uh, if state is this, if state is this. So we can have like multiple if statements. And when we have like, like let's say over three statement, if statements, it just gets really complicated fast. And then instead of using a lot of if statements, we can go, just go over to the switch statement where we can check on, on several conditions um, at the same time. So here um, I have an example of, um, of a state machine, like we can implement state machines um, as a switch statement in C++, where a state machine is just like these different kind of states our program can be in. And to like get, give you a better like, overview of what st state machines uh, are and what we can use them for, we have an example down here where we had just have like some, some kind of door example, where first of all, like we just start here in the idle state of the door and in the idle state, the door is closed. And then if we use the handle on the door, then we will transition from the closed state to the open state. So now the door will be open. And if we're trying to use the key and, and try to lock the door when the door is open, like we don't do anything because uh, we can't do that. So these circles here are, are the states of the pro like the states the program can be in and like the states we can transition between in our switch statement. And then we have these transition arrows here where uh, where it just shows like in which direction or we're transitioning in when when some condition occurs. And then we also have um, the two uh, rings here, which is just like the idle state uh, that our program can be in. So we're now here over in the open state because we use the handle. And if we try to use the handle again, then we'll just transition from the open state to the closed state. And we have closed the door when we use the handle. When we're in the closed state and we use the key, we can lock the door and then it will just transition from the closed state to the to the lock state. And if we try to use the handle in the lock state and the door is locked, we can we can obviously not open the door. So when we're in the lock state here and we want to transition back to the closed state um, to be able to open the door again, we need to, to use the key to unlock the door. So a, switch, a state machine is just to like divide our program into like smaller tasks or like smaller states that it can be in. And then we can tr transition between those states um, when some condition or event occurs. And we're go I'm going to implement this in C++ and, and show you some different kind of examples with if statements and how we can um, set up if statements and use if statements in C++. So we have now jumped over to some line text here and I'm going to show you some different kind of examples with um, if statements and the state machine. So first of all, we just start with including the, the IRO stream for the standard library and just to like um, get the get the default settings up and running in, in, in a C++ uh, file here. And then we're using namespace so we don't have to type like std before uh, in front of like every every function we use from the standard library. And then first of all here in our main function, we just start with declaring two variables, um, a11a one, one a, uh, equals to two, and then b equals to three. And then to use an if statement in C++, we can, we can have this like um, 
um, type definition here, like uh, we, we call this if statement and then we have these parentheses and then our condition will be inside of these parentheses. And if this, uh, and if, uh, and if this um, condition is true, we'll, we'll run the code inside of the curly brackets here. So in this case here, if I hit, if I hit control B, we can see that it will print out that A is less than B. I just printed it out here as well. But we can see that A is indeed uh, less than B because A is two and, and B is three. So it will go inside of this um, scope here and then it will print out um, this sentence here. We can also have like a short notation for if statement if we only if we're only put, go, going to do like one line of code in our if statement instead of these like curly brackets. We can also like write multiple lines of code inside of these brackets. But if we just want to like print something out if some condition occurs or change between some states, we can use this uh, notation here where we just say like if if the condition here and then after that condition we just see, say like see out. Um, or write out to the terminal at that a is less than b. So I'll just come these two out. So so if we go down here, we can see that we can also have like if statements and else if statements. Um, so if we have some some condition that occurs, um, then we can like check if another condition occurs or if none of those condition occurs or like is true, then we'll just go to some something else, which is like the last uh, last state down here um, in the else. So first of all, here again, we check if A is less than B and if it's less than B, we just print it out or else if it's, if it's not less than B, if A is not less than B, we will check that if, if A is equal to B and if it's not equal to B or uh, A is less than B, it will just go down here to the last, um, last state here, which is the else state. So if none of these conditions are true, we'll just go down to the else state here and it will print out that A is greater than B. So in this case here, we have three different states um, for these conditions that uh, A, A and B. So if we print this out here, we can see that A is, is still less than B. Um, but if we get a, uh, go up here again and change A to three, for example, we will, we, this condition will not uh, be true because now it, there, these two numbers are equal to each other. And it will then go down here to the if statement and, and check this condition. And then that condition will return true. So if I print it out again, we can see that A is now equal to B. So this is like how we use um, if else statements in, in C++. We can also like have a short notation of the if, the if else statement. If we, for example, let's say we have uh, have the time of the day, which is like uh, 20. Um, and then we can have some like some some string that just restores the result from um, from our if else statement here that we call here. So we can have our statement here where we just say like if the, if the time of the day is less than 18, we will we will like make the string to as good day or else we'll just set it as good evening so we have our if statement here and then we have like the condition um if this if this condition is true we have like the the state uh, the state that that we need to like run here or else we'll just like have uh, it out after this column here so in this case if we print this out i'll just come this out up here first we can do like multi-line comments by by, by doing these, uh, this notation here. So we can comment on multiple lines uh, at the same time, which is also uh, a very cool feature. So if we go down here again and we print out the result here in this case, we can see that it will write out good evening because the time of the day is, is, is above 18. So it will run this condition down here and it will set uh, the, re the string result here uh, to good evening. And let's say we have, for, like for example, the time of the day is, uh, if it is 12 then this condition will be true and it will execute like the first um, like the first condition here like or line and now we'll print out good day if we if we print out uh, or run the program again so this can also be used for certain different kind of things and if we just want to like um, write a short if else statement we can do it in in one line and we can even like declare a, like um, give that value to some um, to some variable where up here we had some uh, multiple lines of code, um, multiple lines of code we have to write out. So it's actually like uh, six lines of code here, code here, where here is just like one line of code. But this these, um, this notation up here is like better if you have if you need to like write more code, which which we often do inside of the inside of the like the curly brackets here. So I'll just come this out again here and then. We can also use like logic operators inside of our if statements. So let's say here we, for example, want two conditions to be true. We, we now have a, a, a third variable here, uh, C, 
which we just said equal to four. So first of all, here we just have two conditions that need to be true because we're using the, the and operator. So this condition needs to be true and this condition needs to be true to, to have this code running down here or else it will just go, um, go on in the program. So in this case here, if we print this out here, we can see that both conditions are true because A is less than B and A is also less than C. So if we, for example, set here like a C to one, we can see it will not print anything out because now C is less than A. So this condition is not true. And when we're using the AND operator, both conditions need to be true inside of the if statement here for, uh, for this line of code to be executed. And if we go down here, we can also use the, the OR operator. So only one of the conditions has to be true. So if this condition is true and this condition is, is false, it will still uh, run this code here. Or if this condition was false and or like on, uh, the other way around, like only one of these conditions need to be true. But and it will also run if if both condition is true um, with the OR operator. So in this case here, if we print it out, we can see that one condition is true. So it will print this line of code out here and, and execute like the code we have inside of the curly curly brackets here again. And the last example I have here is, is the switch statement and the state machine that we uh, that we talked about and I showed an example on in the slides, where we have these different kind of states where uh, our door can be in. So first of all, we just define the states that our, our door can be in and the, and the handle and key we could use to transition between states. This will ideally be like uh, defined um, in the top of the file here, but just to like give you a better overview and make it more clear, um, I just wrote it down here. And then we have like a state which just starts um, starts in the idle state, and our idle state would uh, was the the closed state to start with. And then we have our switch statement here where we can check on the state. So in this case here, this just like corresponds to to an if. Um, if k like if statement and then we have our statement inside of here and let's say now the door is closed so the state will be door closed so we we'll go down here to the case um, which is door closed and then these lines of uh, code here will be executed so when we come down here to our uh, door closed state we first of all just write out that the door is closed and then if we try to use the handle just like this is just an, an direct, uh, a direct direct uh, implementation of the state machine uh, diagram that I showed you in the slides so if we use the handle here, we just, if the handle is used, we just transition, we just set the state equal to door open and then we transition to the, to the door open state. So these lines of code won't be, uh, won't be executed uh, when we transition to the door open state. So when the state is set to door open, we will go down to like the case here because then it just checks here on, um, on this sta uh, switch statement here. And then the state will now be door open. So these lines of code here will be executed. And if we were up here and we used like the key, we could have locked the door here and then it, will ha it would have transitioned to the door lock state. But now we just go down here and the door open because we use the handle and then we can check like if we use the key when the door is open, like we just do uh, nothing. Uh, but if we use the handle when the door is open, we again uh, lock the door and we set the state equals to door lock and then it will transition back to, to uh, the, the door closed state here. So like we can we can transition between the different kind of states uh, that our program or some application can be in, and it's a very nice uh, and cool feature to like have if if we have like some uh, in some applications where they run like different kind of events, so we can transition between those events when some code needs to be executed. So it's a real nice feature, and it's also like a very practical. Um, a very practical feature to know and also like know how to implement and use um, in your program so yeah that's it for this video guys we have been over like the switch statement um, and some different kind of if statements and how we can like how we can use if statement for different kind of purposes and also like just to how to set them up in in C++ and use them and also like uh, do some short annotation if you only need to do like one line of code so thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button under the video and also like the video so you can use show the user algorithm that you like this content and you want more of it in the future so if you want to do like some some different kind of stuff with the um, with your programs or with the c++ that you're learning in, in this tutorial i've also made a tutorial on uh, data structures and algorithms and also a computer vision tutorial and artificial intelligence tutorial where i'm using uh, mostly C++ in those tutorials as well. I'll, I'll link to one of them up here and you can go check that out if you have like 
uh, follow this tutorial and you want to like do some more practical and more complex stuff and also like just like some practical applications that you can like use outside in the real world. So yeah, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.